we have a special guest with us today, Mr. Ted Flynn from uh, Signs and Wonders. His website is sign.org. His wife is Maureen with uh, Praying Fast for America. She's been a guest here many times. Ted and Maureen Flynn, incredible couple. Amen. Um, really lay people involved in uh, leading the church evangelization and one of their most well-known topics, I will call them great experts on the topic of uh, the events and the prophecies of Garabandal, a small little village in Spain where Our Lady appeared in the early 1960s. And uh, Ted has written many, many articles. He's spoken all over the place. They've um, made videos, all kinds of things on Garabandal, and he's been working on a new book on Garabandal. So Ted, let's start a little bit about why the new book and what's this book? How is this going to help us understand uh, what's going on with Garabandal? Garabandal is is a, something that I've been involved with now for just about 40 years. And the way it started for me is that I met somebody at our local church in 1984. We had just moved to an, uh, a, another town in Fairfax County. We had come from Arlington Falls Church, and we moved a little further west. And there was a person that I met whose father-in-law was the person who was very involved with Joey Lomangino, who is the protagonist and is called the Apostle of Garabandal. I was fascinated with Garabandal from the very, very first time I heard of it for the simplest reason of all. I saw where the world was headed. I mean, if a person is in prayer and scripture, they know what's going on. And you could see where the world was headed with a lot of its social policies with, you know, from abortion and everything else, you knew sin was going to get progressively worse. So I, I felt Garabandal was the act of divine mercy for the entire world to bring it out of this tailspin. Now, that was in 1984. Now, uh, we, uh, Maureen and I went there with us, our family for the first time in October of 1994, after we had written a book on Marian apparitions called The Thunder of Justice. Now, that was released in 1993. And the centerpiece of that book, really the heart and soul in the, in the vital organs of that book was really Garabandal on the warning and the miracle. And there's been tremendous interest in this with, a, with some recent confusion as well as people falling away. But for me, it just explains the culture in a very, very, very profound way as heaven has a plan. I mean, it, a, 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 a precedent all through scripture is that the Lord never abandons his remnant. It's, it's actually a staple of the Old Testament and it's implied more in the new, but it's very clear in the old with this if-then clause. And you can see a continuum of things coming to fruition from when their prophecy happens, whether it's in Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Joel. And so we see a situation where this explains that heaven has an agenda to save its remnant. And here you guys are divine mercy. This is the ultimate in divine mercy. That's what this is about. It's not a downer. This is a message of great, great hope. Yes, there's some severe messages if people do not amend their life, as most apparitions do have. They're conditional upon man's response. And there is no really restoration of a culture until there's repentance. And I think right when things get very, very dire in the world, whether it's more social policies coming out of government, maybe an economic event that's cataclysmic that can really cause a, a world of pain for more people, this is going to be the answer. And in my opinion, heaven is going to move. I mean, I've been doing a deep dive into this material. I mean, in my bibliography, I literally have 38 books. I have hundreds of magazines from uh, which was originally called Garabandal uh, when Joey was alive uh, and, and up until he got very, very ill. And then Barry Hanratty, the editor, just kept going <clears throat> and produced uh, the magazine, I guess, six times a year. So I've got 
hundreds of those cumulatively over the years. And um, when you do a deep dive into this material, what you can see, it's frankly overwhelming towards this winter when I was deep, deep, deep into it, just in what I call my phase of writing is the data dump, getting all of the material in there. It frankly leaves you almost in an ecstatic state to see what heaven is going to do if these promises are real. Now, in my opinion, you know, they are real and I sure as heck wouldn't be spending the time and the effort in, on, on doing this if I didn't think of it's real because I describe Garabandal as literally the hope diamond of gems. This explains where everything comes together I've been to Garabandal now twice. I was there for the 100th anniversary of Fatima, where we just had a trip of pilgrims and we went from Fatima to Santiago over to Santander to Garabandal. And all of our group, we had 100 pilgrims. We had two priests. Every single person believed that Fatima was true and it happened as it was said. But to the individual where we were on the bus talking, you know, when you make these bus trips, we all felt that the future of where everything was going to be go going was Garabandal with the promises that are made there. Now, what are these two? What are these two events? Right. The first major event is the warning. Now, that's a very, very general term, and there's interchangeable phrases or words that principally mean the same thing. Another for the warning in Spanish is the aviso. The Spanish would use that more of a, of a word, but we use either life review, illumination of conscience, or a judgment in miniature. Now, this event is going to be so big. There isn't any event in all of scripture or in the world, whether it's uh, what happened at Fatima, where 70,000 people were standing in a drenched, wet field, and then the, the sun hurtled, what that was the miracle. But uh, whether it's the parting of the Red Sea, which was a very localized event, and you can point to any event in, in scripture, in tradition, that these were local events, but there hasn't been a single event like Garabandal, where every single person in the world will see their soul as God would judge it. There's never been an event like this in world history. Now think about this judgment in miniature. Many, many people throughout history have spoken in language similar to the warning where they would see the state of their soul. That's happened in, in whether it's uh, St. Edmund Campion, Maria Esperanza, you know, even Pius IX gave a phrase like that, Paul VI. Um, and there's been many people speak in language somewhat similar to this. Marie Julie Jehaney, um, uh, Elizabeth Kindleman, A Flame of Love. They use uh, Christina Gallagher. Now, I only use several examples in my book like that because there's no end to it. And they specifically weren't speaking about Garabandal, but they were speaking about an aviso where people, it would be a life-changing event. So think of it. We have this rot, stench, and corruption in our midst. And here is heaven producing an event to reverse this course of history. Why? Because what heaven is doing now, and we were just talking a little bit before the show on this issue, um, any individual listening today who is having a spiritual orientation in life, and they are for the very fact that they're here and wanting to listen and being a part of this show and, and listeners, every single person here has an orientation to the godly and the spiritual in the pursuit of virtue. There's no question or an individual wouldn't be here. So what heaven is doing now is heaven in any milieu or, or um, any area of society that you can think of, academic, corporate, government, media, you can be with an individual just for a matter of minutes today in a general conversation in a social setting, and that individual can see where you stand if you respond. And if they say something like, 
you know, uh, abortion should be legal everywhere. You know, the border should be open for all migrants, you know, abusing the rule of law. Um, the Dobbs decision was a disaster. And you'll know where they stand on almost any social issue based upon the major ones. And, and depending on who how you respond, if it's contrary to their view, they'll label you as somebody they don't want to be with. That's how violent and caustic our culture is today, to where people no longer even want to associate with people who are not like-minded. And we're seeing a tremendous division like that more and more. So this event has never been seen in the history of the world. Now, there's going to be another event. Now, we know generally about this judgment in miniature and the people who have experienced this all say, now, since 1992 or so, when I began to get much heavier into this for books and stuff, um, I've met as many in the last 30 plus years, I've met as many as 30 people who have come up to me at venues and say they have experienced the warning and they see in that event their sins of omission and commission. So we generally only know that. And the only person who knew the year uh, of the warning itself uh, was Mary Lowley, who was from Haverhill, Massachusetts, and she died in April of 2009. And so that's come and gone with the person, but she doesn't announce anything. But then the other promise is within one year. Now, the operative word is within. Now, a legal scholar listening here knows that within is legally 364 and three quarter days. So it, it doesn't say it has to be in the same calendar year. It doesn't give any specifications on time, like we're hearing more from other mystics. It's, you know, a certain amount of weeks or months. They may say that, and it may be true, but to stay true to form in this book, I only use what was said to the young uh, to the young girls by the Blessed Mother, I intentionally stood away of mixing and matching what other visionaries have said, either about the warning or the miracle. I've, I've put what some people said about it, um, the warning itself, but I didn't put what any other individual said about the miracle because I had to stay consistent with what the Blessed Mother said from 1962 to 1965 over a period of four years and four months to four young girls with over 2,000 apparitions to these young kids. Now, there wasn't a tremendous amount of public messages that came out of there like you see at places like Medjugorje and some other places. There's not a lot of them. But what was said was very, very powerful. And we know from the miracle, which will be within one year, we know it'll be between the months of March, April, May, or June, that in it, I can get into all of the nuances and all of the controversies of where some people like, you know, Maria Sirocco said it was in April, uh, didn't say the year. Conchita announces it eight days in advance. It's, it's uh, and I take it back, but Conchita also said on Irish TV, it would be March, April, May, or June when she was a young woman, but everybody tends to see March, April, or May. So there's differences of opinion, and I present all of this data of, of uh, with the different nuances, because here's what happens. Now, we have, you said, X number of people on this. If you were to go around and tell a story to the person next to you, and by the time it maybe gets to the 10th or 12th person, and then gets back to the original what was said, many times the story wouldn't even be recognizable. I mean, anybody in business knows that this is often a management strategy thing in training where they'll tell somebody something and so the story gets back. So there's a lot of anecdotal stories that have emerged over the last number of years that are just simply anecdotal stories. And some of them have been bent and distorted over the last 60 years. 
Some may be true, some may not be, and that's part of the issue. And I try to present this in the book factually and historically, but I always go back to the original data of what was said very, very early. So Garabandal, with this miracle, we know it's going to be Eucharistic, it's going to be Marian. What this miracle will also has also never been seen in the history of the world. It's she said it's like a pillar of smoke, but she, but she didn't say it was one. And we know there was the Shekinah glory, or in the English phonics, it's Shekinah glory of the pillar of smoke by day and the fire by night. But she specifically said it's like it, but it isn't specifically a pillar of smoke. So we don't really know what it is, but there's more data, specifically uh, data points on what the miracle is. You can see it, not touch it, and you can televise it. So there's so many aspects of this that, you know, you know, there was a period where I was just putting all of this data in and getting it typed up and then trying to massage it to make it make sense. But the data is actually overwhelming to me going to bed at night of seeing God's mercy and grace. That's my takeaway from this whole project, that this is an event of mercy and grace to a very, very sinful world of a loving God who is saving his people and giving them a chance. And the name of the book is called Bandal, The Divine Reset. And the subtitle is uh, Warning in the Great Miracle, Two Supernatural Events That Will Change the World. And that's why I think we're very, very close to God's move right now. The, the pieces are not totally in place just yet. There has to be some events to happen. But there is an, and I don't guess dates in the book. I, I'm loath to guess dates. I never have, never will, because you never write. And it's hope. I don't, I, I don't see anything really apocalyptic in this. I'm, I'm greatly encouraged that God has a plan for the salvation of mankind. And this event is it. This is heaven's move right now to save mankind. It's all I can tell you is being around this material, I've never been so encouraged. And let's face it, we have a world right now living in great pain. There are many, many people really struggling emotionally with, 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 with how to deal with this onslaught of negativity. And I deal with that in the book, that you, you have to stress the fundamentals and the faith. What, was the, what are the principal messages of Garabandal? Uh, the priesthood, the Eucharist, fidelity uh, to to the church, and in its magisterial doctrine. I mean, so there's only several main themes. What which was the message of Garabandal? And the Blessed Mother said to Father Stefano Gobi way way back in, in like 1979. Right when it appears, Satan is the victor. I shall snatch his victory away in a trice. Think of that. Right when it appears Satan is the victor, I shall snatch his victory away in a trice. Trice, I thought I misread it the first time I read that about 30 years ago. Uh, trice means quickly. I thought it was a misprint of thrice. Trice means quickly or in a, in a, in a quick amount of time. And so this is heaven's mercy to a group that is a believer in divine mercy. This is God's ultimate act of saving mankind from perdition.